Ayo, yo, ay, yo, ay, it's the best of vibes, it's the best of vibes. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best of Vibes podcast, uh, episode nine this time. Today we're joined by father-son AFL draft prospect, Taj Schofield. How are you, Taj? Yeah, I'm good, boys. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. That's good. I know you, you told me you are originally from Perth, but tell us like where you grew up and playing juniors and stuff like that. Yeah, so... um. Yeah, obviously, grew up in. I was born in Adelaide uh, when Dad was playing at Port, and then um, yeah, moved back to Perth when I was uh, four, I think. Um, and then yeah, was there until two years ago playing my junior footy at Serena Duncraig, um, and then yeah, played a bit of 18s at Subiaco Football Club as well, and then yeah, moved over here and then just been playing for Woodville, so it's been good. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um, all the clubs that you played for, what has to be one of the best ones you played with? Like, played, yeah, played with. Um, I'd probably say, well, obviously, I've loved all of them, but I'd probably say Subiaco just because when I was playing 18s, like, dad was coaching the league team, and um, like, I knew a lot of the boys there, and uh, a lot of the like 18s boys they were like my good mates so um and yeah that they gave me plenty of opportunities like I was only playing 18s when I was 15 so it was pretty handy they gave me the opportunity to play in that so yeah probably but I've loved my time at all the clubs so you've been training with Port since you were about 15 I saw Mm. How, how was that how's that been yeah it's been good um obviously I guess it's not Oh, we, in pre-season, we did two weeks of, like, full training, like, with the full squad. But before that, it was a lot of just, like, um, craft work and watching vision and all that sort of stuff, um, which has been really good for my development as a player. And, um, yeah, I guess it's just pretty cool to rub shoulders against the AFL boys like Travis Boak and Robbie Gray and all those boys. Like, it's pretty cool to be alongside them and, Hopefully, if the draft goes well, we'll be able to be on a list with them, but we'll see how we go. So, who's your who's been your biggest mentor from what Adelaide standpoint? Um, well, yeah, other than my dad, probably be Paul Stewart's been pretty good. He's um, like the head of the academy, so he runs all that sort of stuff. So he's always the one that's doing the craft work and like going through vision from games and all that sort of stuff. So probably him. He's been pretty good. And then, um, yeah, I guess dad has also been there for me and been a pretty big mentor, so. Yeah, of course. Yep. Um, who do you uh, base, like, your game style around? Um, oh, sort of a few, like, I guess it's sort of changed over the years. Like, when I was a bit younger, I always wanted to play like Robbie Gray. So yep. I sort of tried to play like him and then, um, so as I've got older, I've sort of based it off like Zach Merritt. Um, so sort of play like him and um, even like Kane Lambert when I play half forward as like a high half forward that can work hard and get the ball and whatnot. So uh, those sorts of types, I guess. Um, now, I don't know if you'll remember this, Dave, but I saw your dad won the flag with Port in 2004. Yeah. Um, do you remember that? And if so, how was that for you? I'll be completely honest. I was actually asleep through the grand finals, so I don't, I don't remember nothing really. So, <laughs> um, but I've seen vision of going up on the stage, like when he received his medal and that, and that's pretty awesome to like, I guess, watch, but yeah, no, I can't remember too much from that day. <laughs> yeah. Don't mind if you hear me dogs barking in the background too. Ah, so good. My parents are downstairs making making noise. So it's good. That's good. That, do you, have you played any other sports besides like footy? Um, yeah. So when I was growing up, I was playing. Well, not playing. I was doing like little athletics. So I did that for a bit, and then um, and then yeah, I played cricket for a few years as well. Um, but then it sort of just started to clash with footy. So I just said footy's a main priority but yeah so but I'm not too good at anything else I'm pretty trash at basketball and yeah so nothing besides cricket I guess so yeah 
Yeah, Zach, we said before we're going to get all the South Australia boys down to Melbourne and we're going to play a bit of basketball against them. Yeah. All right, sweet. I'm down. Um, are, you a, are you a Port supporter or do you support like the Crows or something like that? Nah, yeah, I'm a Port supporter. But when I was younger, I used to go for West Coast. But as I sort of got older, I realised that Port is a team I should be supporting. So sort of started supporting them probably five, six years ago. And then, yeah, so just been supporting them, but, yeah. Um, going into the draft and all that sort of stuff, and, like, when you have your first game, or if you have, you know, your first thing, who has to be, like, the one person you're looking forward to playing against? Oh, um, I guess you could say, like, it is... Like, I am going to be looking forward to playing against them, but I'm not at the same time in a way. Like, it'd be sick to play against, like, Dustin Martin or someone like that, but then it wouldn't because I'd just, like, be big balls that you have to try to play against. But, no, I'd, I'd probably say Dustin Martin. Um, he's pretty very good player. So, um, probably someone like him or um, Dangerfield or, or one of those top sort of players, I guess. So, yeah. Um, now you and Lockie Jones. Lockie's a poor NGA, and obviously your father son prospect. What's that like? Like being mates with him and being able to like train with him. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's um, it's been it's been so good. Like obviously me and him, we've done all the same stuff, so we do all the same um sort of craft work, and well, not we do our own craft work that individ individualizes for like our needs, what we need. Um. But yeah, I guess like training with him and doing all similar stuff to him has been awesome. Like we're obviously um, pretty good mates. Like all our, we've got a big friendship group, so um, all of us we're all mates. But yeah, being able to train with Lockie and hopefully we both end up at Port, that'll be pretty cool. Um, and it'll just make me feel more comfortable as well, knowing someone else there as well. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm not sure if you did do a draft combine, but if you did, how was it? Like What's it like? Yeah. Nah, so, um, yeah, I went, I got invited to the combine and it was a great experience, like, testing and that in front of the clubs. Um, I actually tweaked my hamstring in the 20 metre sprint, so that probably wasn't great. But other than that, yeah, it was a good experience and, um, yeah, I guess good exposure to, like, I guess the draft process. So. I saw you clocked up some of the best scores and times in the combine. Yeah. Um, what was that like, like finding that out that you were up there within some of the best? Yeah, well, I guess um, in the 20 and like the ability, you sort of expect a smaller player to um, get good times, I guess. Um, but then, yeah, when I saw that I was up there for some of the jumps as well, I was sort of shocked because I was tiny and small men aren't supposed to be able to jump high. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, I was pretty shocked, to be honest, when I saw it. Um, but, yeah, it was, obviously, it was obviously pretty cool to win a couple of the events. So it was good. Yeah. Um, what, would you, what would you say, like, your strengths are and why? Like, your ability-wise? Probably, like, I feel like my footy IQ, like, I know just from a young age, learning all the knowledge and of the game and, um, like, just game plans and that has helped me now. So, I feel like my footy IQ and then probably, like, my speed and agility, that's also a strength. And then uh, my kicking, like, my foot skills is pretty good as well. So, I feel like they're the main things that I'm pretty good at. So, Yep. Uh, what do you like to do in your off-season? Um, I like to surf, so I've got like sort of two friendship groups. I've sort of got like the footy boys, like Caleb and that, and then I've got my surf mates um, from school. So that's something I'd do just to sort of take my mind off footy. And um, yeah, I guess I do that. And then when I'm just chilling at home, just PS4 and just yeah, I don't know, just do that sort of stuff. Just the usual stuff, I guess. So. Was that similar during the corona break, like where everything was shut down? Yeah, yeah well, I guess surfing was actually probably like one of the only things we could sort of do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was just doing that and then, yeah, 
time play as well with the boys. So. <laughs> um, through COVID, like, um, what was your one like the way you, you, you stayed fit? Um, well, yeah. So I got given, we got given a program through like the state academy. So we got given that program to do. Um, so I was doing that, and then. I did a couple of sessions with a few of the Port Boys, uh, Travis Boak and Connor Rosie. So I did a couple of running sessions with them. Um, but I would guess in the break, I was just trying to do everything I could to stay as fit. So I was pretty much doing something every day, uh, whether that was running, gym, like boxing. I did a lot of boxing with dad actually. So, um, but yeah, I guess it was just a time where you just sort of had to be mentally tough and just like, Try to find things that worked, I guess. So, um, going into the draft, being a father son prospect, is there any like added pressure onto you, or do you just sort of take it as it comes? And just... yeah, well, yeah. I guess, um, I guess there's going to be pressure, like especially because dad's one of the coaches at Port, so there's going to be that, I guess, outside noise of people sort of saying, like, you're only getting drafted because you're dad and all that sort of stuff, but I guess. I guess that's they can think that, but deep down, I know that recruiters have watched me. I guess since I've been since I was fifteen, probably. So um, you don't just get drafted just because you had played AFL. Yeah, like you actually got to be half decent, I guess. So I guess yeah, there's a little bit of pressure on that, but I try and block it out as best as I can. But obviously, there's times where it sort of gets to you a bit, but you just got to try and do your best to sort of guard up. I guess. So. I'm not sure if you're allowed to actually tell us. You said you had with clubs. Yeah, I guess um, I've had I've had a few, but um, I guess I probably have didn't haven't had as many as the other boys. Like I guess obviously one being a father son, and I've been injured and haven't played a whole lot of footy in the past couple of years. So I feel like I haven't reached my top level yet. So I feel like if all I need is just get on an AFL list and do a pre-season and I feel like I'll be able to sort of thrive off that environment and hopefully hopefully not get injured next year and yeah hopefully things go well but yeah I've had a few clubs yeah yeah what does your pre-game routine and recovery look like yeah so I've actually like I guess you could say it's bad but it's good in a way as well like in terms of routine like I have to be pretty spot on otherwise it throws me out of whack a little bit but I guess, um, so let's say we're playing a Saturday game. Uh, Thursday night, I'll always eat like a chicken curry. So like rice is carbohydrates. And then the day before, I always eat Subway for lunch and then just like a pasta for dinner. And then the morning of the game, I always eat um, like bacon and eggs or something like that. Uh, and then yeah, I guess I'm always drink. I always drink like the same amount of water and all that sort of stuff just to stay hydrated. But uh, and then yeah, in terms of recovery, um, yeah, I guess I sort of, I sort of do that based on how my body feels. So if I'm real sore, then I'll do more. If I'm not as sore, I probably won't do as much. But I guess that's sort of based off yeah how sore I am after the game and stuff. So what do you tend to do for recovery? Like say your body was really sore. Yeah, well, I usually just head down to the beach. Um, I might, like, sleep in skins. Not that I know that it actually does anything, but it's just, I know, just you just tell yourself that it does something, I guess. Um, yeah, do that. And then, yeah, I guess it's just, like, for me, I find, like, going in, like, ice baths or in the ocean or in the pool, whatever, helps me. So now I'm just doing that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, stretching and rolling and whatnot. Yep. Um, so you get Subway and all that sort of stuff. Um, what's your go-to sub? Uh, I'd probably go like a foot-long Italian herbs and cheese with chicken teriyaki, something like that. I'll go back to uh, pre-game. Do you have a pre-game pump-up song? And if so, what is it? Oh, gee whiz. Um, not really, to be honest. Like, I guess I can't, oh, I can't think. Um, oh. I can't think, to be honest, but I've got, like, a bit of a footy playlist that gets me pumped, but I can't think of one specific song that gets me pumped up, I guess. I just got a bit of a playlist, but 
some of the boys play music before and it's shocking. Like they play like Taylor Swift and all that sort of stuff. So I just chuck my headphones in if I hear that stuff. So, um, but yeah, nah, not, not one specific song. What sort of artists or genre do you prefer? Um, probably just like, like rap music, really. Yeah. Uh, there's a few like radio songs that aren't too bad. Um, but yeah, mainly just rap music, I guess. Yeah. Pretty stuff. Um, yeah. I'm gonna try and get off the sort of draft, that sort of stuff. But um, Mills usually asks this question: question, if you're at a pub and you've got like a few minutes to order, what would what would you order? Terms of food. Yeah, like a food. Sort of. You just go straight to an army, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I can't. Every, I think every single time I've gone to a pub, that's what I get. I don't really think twice about it either. So probably that. To be Do you know any anyone who doesn't like a army? Uh, I don't think so. Well, you've just met one. I can't. I can't stand them. Do Do you not like him? Oh no. no. That's the first, I'm not even going to lie, that's the first person I reckon I know who doesn't like it. I find them disgusting. I don't know what it is. It's kind yeah. of... Yeah, I guess some, I'll be honest as well, like some of them, if you put too much like ham or like cheese on them, like they can be a bit like, a bit gross, but yeah. Yeah. They're, you know, like the palmy, gee whiz. No, I got to go with the good old steak. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. Yeah, that, that'd be my second option, I reckon. Um, do you have any pets? Yeah, I got a dog. So I got a little cavoodle, a little fluff ball sort of thing. So yeah, that's all. Um mum's not not mum's not a fan of um cats, so yeah, we got a dog. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I've got three here, so it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You have your license and all that sort of stuff. Um, what car do you have? I drive a Commodore. Yeah, it's like, I think Zach, Zach Phillips drives one too. Bailey Chamberlain drives one. All the boys, we all drive Commodores. So, um, so yeah, just it's just like black, tins, black tint and it's white, so it's not bad. Yeah, nice. Um, what's your best or funniest story, football related or not, that you can tell us? Football related. Um, it doesn't have to be. If you don't want it to be football related. Post it back up a bit here. Um, so Zach tends to think that he can play like a midfielder when really he's 200 centimetres of length so like he can't actually do the things like midfielders can do so in one game um, Zach he got the ball and he's like tried to step someone and like kicked it off his knee and I just turned around to Caleb and I was like what is this bloke doing and then literally like five minutes later he gets a ball and tries to do the exact same thing and gets caught holding the ball. And me and Caleb were just looking at each other like, this bloke just does not learn. He's literally 200 centimetres tall when trying to step around people. Like, that's probably, in terms of footy related, that's probably the funniest thing. Um, but yeah, there's yeah, there's plenty of, plenty of stuff, I guess. So. Yeah, he usually asks everybody this, but are you, da- are you taking, are you dating somebody? What's that again? Say it again. Are you dating someone? Oh, right. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I've got a girlfriend. So when I first moved over, I probably met her within a month. So we've been dating for a while now. So I'll get into the Insta questions now because you had a few about that. Oh, no. You didn't, you didn't get many, as many as other people, but you, I think you got about three. Yeah, okay. But we'll start with uh, Bailey Chamberlain. Oh, no. Um. He said, is it true your missus was set on Hagen before you? Oh, no, no, no. No, so um, <laughs> that's a stitch up. Hagen um, said um, something too. That'll, that'll come up. When Hagen first moved over, well, sorry, when I first moved over and me and Hagen started at Henley at the same year, her and Hagen chatted for a few days and then I got a hold of a Snapchat and then we started talking and I sort of stole her off Hagen. So that's sort of, that's where that sort of comes from. <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Kane Sherlock 
who's a friend of the show that we haven't had on yet. Yeah. But he said, uh, where are you getting drafted to? Like you said, that you have have had five. Had, sorry, I'm like illiterate. I can't read it, man. Like you said that you have had over five clubs. So, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully just end up at Port, but who knows? We'll see where we end up. Uh, well, Hagen's come in with the last swing here. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> um, is it true your miso wanted a real man but settled for you? Oh, <laughs> no. Let's just say Hagen will literally go for anything. He <laughs> likes anything that lives, literally. <laughs> so... I think he's just a bit salty that I stole her off him, really. <laughs> but, yeah. She she did end up with a real man, I reckon. So <laughs> I don't know what he'd think about that, but... Yeah, nah. Oh, well. Oh, well. What other hobbies do you have? Um, I've actually got, like, a DJ set down there, so I like to just listen to music and just play around with that thing. Um, and then, yeah, as I said before, like I surf and that sort of stuff, but, um, yeah, I guess I'd like to go just like shoot around with the boys, but I'm horrible at basketball, so I'm no good at that. So, and I'm small, so that doesn't help either. So I guess, yeah, I don't mind basketball, but no good at it. So, but yeah, they're probably the main ones. Do you watch NBA or support any team sort of thing, or is it just more? I guess I've sort of I've tried to like I've tried to follow the NBA, but I just like lose motivation to like watch it or look at the scores and whatnot. So yeah, yeah. Fair enough. What's your most embarrassing story about yourself? Uh, most embarrassing story that you want to say, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, I can't think. Oh. Come back to it if you want. Yeah, we'll come back to it. I can't think of anything. I'll I'll try to think of something. So I know you were injured and all that sort of stuff, but have you had any other injuries while playing footy and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, well, obviously, um, I had like the last couple of years of her, like done my ankle and then did my hamstring like a month or two ago. Um, but before that, when I was 15, I hyperextended my elbow, but that was like not really, that wasn't nothing too bad. And in that same year, I like fractured my thumb, but that wasn't anything too bad either. But then yeah. the main one was like, oh, actually when I was, this isn't footy related, but when I was, um, when I was, six i broke my leg on christmas eve um i was jumping <laughs> that's a good present for your family yeah i know it's a good present um but yeah no christmas eve i was jumping on the trampoline and my leg just snapped in half but um that's about it really yeah yeah um do you have a like a go-to joke a go-to joke um gee whiz I can't think of anything today. A go-to joke. Um, I guess go-to joke. I can't think. I couldn't think of one. Like just on the spot. Like I'm not. I'm not good with jokes. Like making up things like that. I'd have to probably think about it. But usually they're probably inappropriate. So I probably shouldn't say them anyway. But um, yeah, I can't think of one to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. How about you telling your joke, Millsy? You might give him a bit of a... You probably heard mine. Did you watch... Um, who did we have on last? Hagen. Did you watch Hagen's? Nah. Tell, tell us your joke. Um, a guy walks into a bar with a steering wheel down his pants. The bartender goes, mate, you realise you got a steering wheel down your pants. The guy goes, yeah, I know. It's driving me nuts. Ah, uh, that's not bad. That's not bad. I don't have done that. <laughs> that's good. Oh, I, there's one now. I can't think of it. But it's like it's like one like that, like where it's like, but I can't think of it. I'll try to think of it. We'll come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you get drafted to a Melbourne club, mm. what would be the one club you'd want to go to? 
Melbourne club. Probably like Richmond or Richmond or uh, who else is there? Hawthorne looked like a decent club. So probably like Richmond, Hawthorne, uh, Collingwood. Just because they got a good fan base and they're not bad. So. Good fan base. <laughs> Where are you? And they lost, lost a few players, so I might get a game now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Zach, where have your fans disappeared off to, considering you finished ninth? Ah, 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 fuck you. It's, it's a, hey, you got beaten by us by 50 points, so shut up. At least we made finals. Who do you support? Obviously, Collingwood and... I'm a Demon supporter. Oh, okay, yeah. Hey, yeah. We just picked up Ben Brown. You better be scared, Millsy. I'm not scared. It's Ben Brown. Why would I be scared? <laughs> I don't know, because now we've got a sort of a forward line. Well, we've got Trey Rusco. <laughs> if you had a book or a movie about your life, what would you call it? A book or a movie about my life? Um, Scoey's Life? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Nah, oh, if it was a if it was a book, you'd probably say something like that. But if it was a movie. You'd have to be something more creative, I reckon. Um, but yeah, if it was a book, probably like Scully's Life. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. pretty standard. Is that your um, Scully? Yeah, that's a nickname. Yeah, Scully. Yeah, Scully. Um. As like a supporter sort of standpoint, who do you reckon has the most feral fans? Most feral fans. Um probably Collingwood. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know. Like I feel like they're not actually there's no teams that are like that bad. There's just like probably the stereotype for like bad supporters. So like Collingwood are probably stereotyped. Port are probably stereotyped as well for pretty dodgy supporters but I guess I wouldn't say they're dodgy they're just probably passionate about their team but who knows but yeah but I guess when it comes to mind you probably think Collingwood yep sorry mate no I can't <laughs> argue with that I know so many Collingwood supporters are feral yeah nah um like during this time like how we're sort of still locked down and stuff like that but what would you say to people like to help them stay positive sort of thing i guess i guess at the moment it's sort of like seems like it's sort of coming to an not to an end but it's sort of on like heading in a good direction so probably just to sort of like hang in there i guess um like they've done it for that and how over however long you've have done it for so i guess just to hang in for a little bit more because it'll probably soon all be over so I guess, yeah, because it's all heading in, heading in a good direction. So, yeah, yeah. Um, what would you say to a kid that wants to play AFL footy? Um, probably just to keep looking to improve. Like it's pretty cliche saying, but um, it's I guess it's true. Like you just got to keep working on your game and working on the things you're probably not as good at, and keep building on the things that you are good at. So. I guess, yeah, just work hard. Yep. Um, if you could suggest one other person to us to have on, like how Caleb got you, Zach, yeah. you, all that, who would it be? Um, or a few people, you know, a few if you want to. Uh, we'll go Lockie Grubb. Yep. Um, Lockie Grubb. Who else is there? You, know, you could say you could say Lockie Jones as well. Um, you might have to actually get on to him for us because your message is still sitting there. Oh, okay. I'll I'll get on to him. Uh, who else is there? Uh, Riley Philthorpe. You could get him on as well. Yeah, he's coming on soon. Yeah, okay. They're probably the main ones, I reckon. Yep. I'm guessing you don't drink alcohol or anything like that, so I can't really ask you an alcohol-related question. <laughs> oh no, nah, I have it. I'll have a few drinks here and there, but I guess I don't just drink every weekend i'll like only drink on special occasions i guess you could say yep so, yeah. um uh, then what would be your go-to drink 
Oh, I was a CC man, so I used to like get on the CCs, but um, all the boys love the cruisers. Like Caleb loves a cruiser. Um, yeah, like all those boys, they love a cruiser. So probably if I drink, probably yeah, cruisers on maybe like little girl drink like a UDO or something like that. So <laughs> just because they taste nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you come back on like this podcast or show, whatever you want to call it, if we were to message her in the future? Yeah, I would. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty chill. Good yeah. to have a chat. So yeah, I'd get back on. Yeah, too easy. And um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry, I'm a bit stuttery today. I'm not really usually like this, but no, nah, so good. If you were like, say, not drafted to port. Obviously, they're going to give you the ideal opportunity to sort of excel sort of thing. But yeah. If you were to be able to choose like where to be drafted to based on the opportunity you could get, where would you like to go other than Port, obviously? Um, well, I guess being a Perth boy, probably like obviously WA, like West Coast or Frio would be handy like just because I'm familiar with Western Australia, so either there or um, I feel like Brisbane have like a pretty good culture and good system. So I feel like that would help me like, I guess, progress as a player. Uh, so probably, yeah, one of those clubs I wouldn't mind going to. Like obviously the ideal situation is go to Port, but yeah, if that didn't work out then one of those clubs maybe. Yep. Yep. Um. I'm going to ask you because I know I just feel like asking. Um, what's your thoughts on the D's? Um, I actually like them. I, I had an interview with them. Um, well, like they were my first club to sort of contact me. So I don't mind them. Like they seem like a pretty, like they have a pretty good culture and um, like just from the interview and that. And I know a few boys there like Cozy Pickett. And then I know Trent Rivers. And like Luke Jackson from when I was playing in WA. So I guess yeah. Yeah, it seems like a pretty um, good environment and they seem like they're enjoying it. So I guess it's a good sign. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I asked Hagen this, but when you got your first call, obviously you've been in like the AFL sort of sector for a while with Port. Mm. But um, when you got the first call or email, whatever it was, uh, saying that someone wanted to talk to you, were you... Well, you really hitting your back, so were you just pretty chill yeah. and laid back? Well, it was actually funny. So, like, we have obviously, like, me, Caleb, um, Zach and Bailey, we have, like, a group chat. And um, uh, Caleb messaged a chat and was like, oh, like, Melbourne just, like, called me. And then Zach messaged it, like, five minutes later and was like, oh, they just called me also. And then I looked at my phone and I had a missed call. So I called him back. And it was like, oh, like, and they didn't answer. And it was like, oh, such and such from like Melbourne Football Club. And I was like, oh, and then I, they called me back and I answered it and it didn't really sink in. And then as soon as I did, got onto the interview, it sort of like sunk in and sort of shit me back a little bit. Like it was just like a bit nervous, but um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. It's pretty, pretty relaxed Zoom call, I guess. So you just sort of chat like this and it's pretty, pretty relaxed. So. Um, through like interviews and all that sort of stuff, like who's actually there doing all like the interviews and all that sort of thing? Yeah, well, in terms of like with me, so when if you're 18, you can do them on your own, but yep. if you're 17, you have to have a parent with you. Um, but I had one interview with mum and then I turned 18, so my other interviews I did on my own. And then in terms of like the clubs, it's usually like the head recruiter. Um, and then maybe like a list manager, um, a list manager, football manager. Um, when I had one with Brisbane, they had like their well-being person on there, and they had the whole lot. But I guess some clubs do it differently. But um, and then some clubs actually put like a coach on there as well. Like I know yeah. Carlton, Carlton have done that um, with a few of the boys. So yeah. Yep. 
we said you had like a group chat and obviously fairly close with the boys that we've spoken to. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about like that friendship group and what it's like being in that group. Yeah, it's pretty, um, I guess in a way you could sort of say it's toxic, but it's not at the same time. Like we just literally just pay each other out like 24 seven, like whether it's about, I don't know, a girl or footy or school or literally anything like we just find something to pay each other out about and I guess it's sort of brung us closer together like especially through COVID like we're all pretty close mates now and I guess we will be for probably the rest of our lives so um, I guess yeah we're a real sort of strong group but we love to just have fun and just yeah I guess pay each other out so yeah um, out of all the boys, who do you reckon is the funniest? Oh, out of all the... I reckon I'd have to go with Hagen. Like, he's, like, says funny stuff and just, like, keeps, like, a plain face. So, like, he would, yeah. like, say something and it's just, like, hilarious, but, like, he doesn't find it funny and it's just, like, makes it so much more funny. So, I'd probably say Hagen and then... um. Yeah, I guess Zach tries to be funny, but he's not really that funny, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably Hagen, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a slim chance that he watches this, have you got any advice for Hagen with the, with the girls? To get the girls? I reckon um, he's just got to relax a bit. Like, I'm pretty sure he contracted a disease from a girl, so he's actually just got to just chill out a bit. <laughs> He's getting around. Yeah, around, 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 around that way. yeah so he, I think the one thing is he's got to relax a bit. Um, just got to chill out and just hold his horses. The, the right girl will come to him. He doesn't need to go searching for it. So <laughs> that's probably the main thing. <laughs> if you do get drafted to a Melbourne club, would you uh, meet up with us in that person to have a chat? I would, definitely. Seem like good bloke. So he, as we said before, we can go play basketball or something and then I can show you how to play basketball. Probably not, though. But. <laughs> I think it'll be us showing you how to play basketball, you showing us how to play footy. Yeah, maybe. We'll do that then. That sounds good. Um, but, yeah, no, nah, definitely, definitely we'll catch up. So. But I've got a question for you, boys. Uh, do you use, um, like, see each other much? Or, like, Do you, like, live near each other and whatnot? Or you, I guess you're not really allowed to go out the house now, so... Uh, Zach probably lives about, I would you say, a couple of hours, three hours away from me. Yeah, a couple of hours away. Three hours is a stretch. Probably about two hours. Oh, sorry. Two hours away. Yeah, but, right. like, we used to go to school together, but I graduated and he's still sitting there at school. So. Yeah, you're a little, little year 11. So. Yeah. <laughs> you'd, probably, you'd probably have to, if you come down, you'd probably have to figure out a middle ground somewhere in between. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, if we come down, we got to find somewhere in the middle, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's like Caleb and those boys. They literally live like, well, I guess Bailey. He lives about twenty minutes from my house. Hagen lives about five, and then um, Zach and Caleb live literally like twenty seconds away from my house. So I can never get away from those blokes. <laughs> I literally see them everywhere. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. That's good. So my girlfriend showed me this photo. I'm just gonna show you guys a photo. <laughs> oh, I actually saw that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on Facebook the other day. That's funny. Actually. Yeah. Also, when you um mentioned what dog you had, she like was pulling faces, saying like the oh that's so cute sort of face. Oh, so. No. <laughs> yeah, they're cute, but they're annoying. And some doesn't want to kick me in the head, but. Um... <laughs> This is my little baby. That's her dog. Oh, yeah, that's cute. Little fluff ball. She is yeah. a little fluff ball. Barks at nothing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, she's my dog literally barks at right there. So I have three pugs that just walk into any door. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. It's funny. My dad took um, the dog. Like, we have a park across the road, and there's like, all these like magpies on like the top of the tree. They must have like a nest or something. Yep. And um, dad took the dog across the road and <laughs> the dog started getting swooped and shit his pants and like run across the road into the house. It was the funniest thing ever. 
<laughs> Thanks for coming on, Taj. No, good. Thanks for having me on, boys. Yep, we'll talk to you after the draft at some stage. Yeah, easy. Yeah. Sounds good. No worries. All right, catch That's you later. Easy. Good luck in the draft, mate. Cheers. See you, boys. It's the best of vibes. We gon' blow your mind. It's the best of vibes. Go to brand new heights.